The United States Special Operations Forces encompass a wide range of highly capable units that tackle some of the most demanding missions ever seen before. While numerous soft units possess exceptional capabilities and have earned their stripes, there are just five particular units that stand out among the rest as Tier 1 Special Mission Units under the Joint Special Operations Command. These five units operate in the shadows, and make a gigantic impact throughout the world while leaving virtually no trace of their existence. With that said, what are the five U.S. military Tier 1 units? How much is known about them? And most importantly, what do they do? Join us as we dive into some of the most highly classified and secretive special operations units in the United States military. This is the five Tier 1 units of the U.S. military. Let's kick things off with Delta Force. Did you ever worry about the boogeyman at night as a kid? Well, for enemies of the United States, they actually have one. Delta Force. Well known for their professionalism, secrecy, and mission success rates, Delta Force is the premier special mission unit of the U.S. Army, always willing to answer the call for the toughest missions out there. Despite being one of the most recognized Tier 1 units in JSOC, the Department of Defense tightly controls information about Delta Force, refusing to comment publicly on the highly secretive unit and its activities. These operators work under the veil of secrecy, hidden from the enemy. As an elite counterterrorism unit, Delta Force has been part of several important missions that have made national headlines, such as the capture of Saddam Hussein, assisting with the evacuation of personnel from the embassy during the 2012 Benghazi attack, and capturing drug kingpin El Chapo. Interestingly enough, Delta Force actually goes by several different monikers. You may have heard it be referred to as the Combat Applications Group, Army Compartmented Elements, and 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta. But despite the several names this elite unit has, there's one thing that everyone knows about it. You don't want to be on the receiving end of what they're capable of. Hold on, one second. I gotta take this. Sorry, guys. Hello? Hey, is this General Discharge? Uh, yeah, but we're in the middle of a video here. I'm gonna have to- Congratulations! You just won a free, all-inclusive trip to the Bahamas. All I need is your mother's maiden name, social security number, and the name of your first pet, and it's all yours. I may have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. I'm gonna hang up and go back to the video. Why does your voice sound so weird? Whatever, I'll just Google your information and steal it that way. Good luck with that one. We're an anonymous channel, and even if you did, I have Aura protecting me. Aura? What's Aura? You haven't heard of Aura? Well, lucky for you, it's the sponsor of today's video. Aura is a modern, easy-to-use, all-in-one service to protect your identity. Seriously guys, 33% of US citizens have experienced some sort of identity theft. By using our link in the description, it will only take you a few minutes to sign up and check to see if any of your emails or personal information has been compromised. Not to mention, you get a risk-free two-week trial. People like the guy on the phone with me like to collect your information and sell it to others online. With Aura, you don't have to worry about that, because they can identify these people and submit opt-out letters to them, and legally they will have to remove all of your information. Not only that, but Aura has so many great features, ranging from parental controls, antivirus, password management, to identity theft insurance, all for one affordable price. Even with disguising your face and voice, you can never be too careful when it comes to your identity. We highly recommend you give Aura a try, and see what Aura can do for you. Wow, that's awesome! I want that. How can I get it? You didn't hear me the first time? You can start using Aura and protect your identity in minutes by going to Aura.com slash General Discharge, which you can find in our description and pinned comment below. Again, it's a risk-free two-week trial. Not only will you be protecting your identity, but using our link really helps support the channel. Again, that's Aura.com slash General Discharge, or you can scan the QR code on screen as well. Wow, I'm signing up right now. Hey, uh, what's a good password you would use? Nice try. Where was I? Oh yeah. Because of how multifaceted Delta Force's mission set is, its operators are highly skilled and trained in specialized disciplines in order to see their missions through. 
In fact, many of Delta Force's personnel are seasoned soft operators who've had years and years of experience doing what they do best. The overarching purpose of Delta Force is to execute complex, high-stakes missions that regular soft forces wouldn't be able to do as efficiently, as JSOC has no room for failure. These missions are highly classified and dangerous, and range from hostage rescue, counter-terrorism, direct action, special reconnaissance, capturing high-value targets, and dismantling terrorist cells. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Delta Force and its operators are extremely flexible with their capabilities, and the unit is not limited based on those primary missions. Their teams are small, agile, and able to deploy rapidly wherever JSOC taps them with the next job at hand. Delta Force operators are placed in one of its four assault squadrons, which are named Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta respectively. Each of these have two direct action assault troops, which consist of shooters, and a recon and surveillance troop, which has shooters and snipers. Fun fact, Delta Force's structure is inspired by the British Special Air Service. Additionally, each Delta Force operator is trained in a wide variety of skills to ensure they will thrive in the environments they get thrown into. Some of these skills are close quarters combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat, direct action, and advanced marksmanship, because being able to rapidly breach, clear, and search buildings and rooms is an essential tactical skill for this unit. So you know a bit about what the US government allows you to know about Delta Force, but what about how you can get into this unit? For starters, Delta Force routinely pulls personnel from mainly the Army Green Berets and Army Rangers, but what makes this unit unique is that it allows people from every branch of the military, soft or not, to try out. Thus, you can say Delta Force is like the equal opportunity employer of the Tier 1 units. Delta Force selection is unlike any other selection out there. As most of its candidates are already soft members with years of experience in multiple deployments, they gotta get creative with their gut checks. Delta Force selection is roughly four weeks long and occurs twice a year in Camp Dawson, West Virginia. During these four gruesome weeks, candidates are put to the test like they've never been before with various day and nighttime land navigation courses, where they'll be expected to ruck multiple miles with a heavy load on their back. As the distances increase, so does the weight, but the timelines decrease. But it's not all physical. On top of already being mentally tested on the brutal physicality, candidates undergo numerous psych exams. They're barraged with questions from a board of Delta instructors and unit psychologists, and their answers are heavily scrutinized, getting dissected piece by piece. This is intended to mentally wear down the candidates. It all culminates with a 40 mile ruck march to be completed in an unknown amount of time, known as the long walk. Assuming they don't quit, only after this is completed will a candidate know if they were selected into Delta Force. If selected in the four-week course, candidates will then go off the grid, hardly communicating with anyone from the outside world, to attend the six-month operator training course. OTC is the constantly evolving end-stage portion of the Delta Force pipeline. Here, you can expect to be trained in a variety of small arms, as well as specialized roles like support weapons and sniping and observing. The course also involves an advanced parachute school, training in CQC, demolitions, tradecraft, and VIP protection tactics. After OTC, a newly minted Delta Force operator will integrate with a team and begin working up for their first mission. To put this in perspective on how tough this selection really is, a Delta Force operator once said that only 12 to 14 completed out of a pool of 120 applicants, which is absolutely insane. Remember, those numbers don't reflect average Joes showing up to selection. They're they're mostly soft operators or those Delta Force deemed worthy of giving a shot. With Delta Force covered, let's move on to the next Tier 1 Special Mission Unit, the US Navy's SEAL Team 6. SEAL Team 6, officially known as the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, or DEVGRU for short, hardly requires an introduction. From high-profile missions capturing national headlines to blockbuster movies and best-selling books, SEAL Team 6 has become a household name. But despite their fame, as you'll come to learn with any of the Tier 1 units, many of the finer details about DEVGRU are classified and unknown to the world. As the premier counterterrorism unit of the US Navy, SEAL Team 6 is quite 
literally the definition of best of the best, as this unit is made up of SEAL selected from existing SEAL teams. As you'd expect from a Tier 1 Special Mission unit in JSOC, they're utilized in the full spectrum of operations. DevGrew specializes in areas such as counterterrorism, direct action, hostage rescue, high-value target extraction, counterproliferation, special reconnaissance, and a whole slew of other things. But there's two things that set SEAL Team 6 apart from the other Tier 1 units. It's maritime and freefall capabilities. It's no secret that Navy SEALs are known for their talents in the water. Hell, even their name literally deals with an aquatic animal. But when you put together the best Navy SEALs into a Tier 1 unit, you can be certain that they will be taking their maritime skills and expertise to the next level. Additionally, SEAL Team 6 operators spend a lot of time perfecting their freefall skills, or more specifically, Halo and Hey Ho jumps. While most special operations personnel receive freefall training, SEAL Team 6 takes their skill set to another level. Mastery freefall requires lots of training and practice to begin with, but they've been known to spend a considerable amount of time and resources to ensure they can conduct those types of missions with the utmost precision. For example, during the hunt for Osama bin Laden, SEAL Team 6 always had an assault troop on standby to conduct a hey-ho jump into Pakistan to neutralize or capture him. But how is SEAL Team 6 structured to get the job done? All in all, there are six squadrons within the unit, each with their own purpose and specialty. Four out of the six squadrons are the assault squadrons, which is where the operators are placed. For the assault squadrons, there's the red squadron, known as the tribe, or red men. The blue squadron, known as the pirates. The silver squadron, which uses a mix of the other squadrons insignias, and the gold squadron, known as the knights or crusaders. Each of these squadrons are divided into three troops of seals, and the troops are divided into even smaller teams. Each DevGrew operator plays a specific role in these teams. Then there's the Gray and Black Squadrons, which are the support squadrons. The Gray Squadron is known as the Vikings, and consists of divers and personnel trained to drive the custom vehicles utilized by SEAL Team 6. And last but not least, the Black Squadron, which conducts reconnaissance, surveillance, espionage, and advanced force operations. With the mission set and structure of SEAL Team 6 covered, let's move on to its selection process. DevGrew's selection is known as Green Team. Unlike the other Tier 1 units, this selection is only limited to one community, the Navy SEALs. But not just any Navy SEAL. Only the top performing team guys who are in peak physical condition get invited to try out for SEAL Team 6. Typically, they will have multiple deployments under their belts and over five years of experience in the teams. Green Team selection process happens once a year and lasts around six months. These candidates, which will remind you have already passed one of the hardest military selection processes in the entire world, are put through yet another challenging and arduous selection. They're constantly observed, scrutinized, and evaluated by the Def Crew instructors, being put through immense pressure. Roughly 50% make it through Green Team and onto SEAL Team 6. Yes, you heard that right. A selection process that weeds out people who have passed what is considered the world's toughest military training has an attrition rate of 50%. Let that sink in. It's safe to say that SEAL Team 6 has solidified its place as not just a Tier 1 Special Operations Unit, but as a legendary fighting force. If you enjoy our content and want to support the channel, please help us reach our goal of 5,000 Facebook followers. If you don't have a Facebook but still want to support us, please consider contributing to us on Patreon, where we have some pretty cool benefits. The links to these will be in the description and pinned comment below. With SEAL Team 6 covered, let's jump into the 24th Special Tactics Squadron. When the Tier 1 units need advanced coordination of air assets, direct fire missions via close air support, the recovery of downed personnel in enemy territory, or advanced battlefield medical care, who do they call? That would be the 24th Special Tactics Squadron, the U.S. Air Force's only Tier 1 Special Mission Unit in JSOC. Also known as Task Force White, the 24th STS is an elite group of airmen whose main mission is supporting and enabling the other Special Mission Units within JSOC. Air dominance and control over any area of operation has long been a crucial element of military doctrine, especially when it comes to soft missions. The primary purpose of the 24th STS is to help further that doctrine and ensure that U.S. air power is fully utilized alongside ground-based special operations forces. This is what separates the 24th STS from its other Tier 1 counterparts, as it is not solely a direct combat-oriented team. It carries with it a number of other purposes, including air-fueled reconnaissance, personnel recovery, 
recovery and triage, assessment and control, joint terminal attack control, and even humanitarian efforts. The communities that make up the 24th SDS are predominantly Air Force combat controllers, pararescuemen, special reconnaissance, and select tactical air control party personnel. These airmen typically augment the other tier 1 units, and embed within their teams where they bring their unique skill sets and talents to the table. To put things simply, you can look at the 24th STS like the free agents of the tier 1 units. We'll give you an example with the combat controllers. Normally, CCTs are often a one-man attachment to special operations teams because they are a force multiplier and are the only certified air traffic controllers on the battlefield for calling in air support. CCTs in the 24th STS have an added layer of training in order to be able to match the operational tempo of a tier 1 unit. And believe us, they do exactly that. The story of John A. Chapman, a 24th STS CCT, sums up what we're trying to say perfectly. In 2002, while attached to a SEAL team, Chapman was severely injured and his team was forced to abandon him. Despite being mortally wounded and alone, Chapman would hold his ground against two dozen enemy combatants and one of the bravest one-man stands ever witnessed. His actions and self-sacrifice would save 23 lives that day, and is one of the most courageous acts of heroism the world has ever seen. What you just witnessed was the first Medal of Honor ever recorded on video. Whether it's a CCT augmenting a team for their air support, a PJ being used for their medical capabilities, or special recon for the reconnaissance assets, the 24th STS can be found working alongside the best of the best. And this is yet another thing that separates them from operators in the other tier 1 units. Not only do they know how to do their own organic job, but they also receive training to be up to speed with whatever unit they wind up working with. As such, all 24th STS members are trained in counterterrorism, direct action, hostage rescue, counterinsurgency, special reconnaissance, and much, much more. They're quite literally the jack of all trades. With the 24th STS covered, let's move on to the Regimental Reconnaissance Company. The United States Army Rangers are one of the most capable and lethal fighting forces in the entire world. As the Army's premier direct action raid force, there's a reason why almost everyone has heard of their motto, Rangers lead the way. But what if we told you that within the highly renowned 75th Ranger Regiment lies a mysterious, secretive unit that executes some of the world's most covert operations? That would be the Regimental Reconnaissance Company, the Army Rangers Tier 1 unit. The Regimental Reconnaissance Company generally consists of the best of the best U.S. Army Rangers, who are trained not only to do everything a Ranger can do, but much more. The unit's three primary tasks are active reconnaissance, surveillance, and direct action. However, in furtherance of its mission set, it's also involved in conducting raids, ambushes, patrols, demolitions, and direct airstrikes. Despite its combat capabilities, ROC is often tasked with performing reconnaissance for the other Tier 1 units in JSOC, which requires a higher level of intel, analysis, and efficiency to ensure that ops run smoothly. As such, the ROC prides itself on being an adaptable and dedicated intelligence unit, and are masters of human, signal, electronic, and communications intelligence. Each ROC operator has a lot of highly refined skills, and can even learn interrogation techniques, surveillance, and computer hacking. In order to get into ROC, the Ranger Regiment only taps the best performing Rangers to try out for its selection process. ROC selection is a two-phase process, where the first phase is designed to weed out candidates, and the second phase is designed to build up and train those who made it through. Phase 1 of the selection process for ROC is two weeks long in an undisclosed area. Candidates will conduct long distance, advanced land navigation while rucking with around 60 to 70 pounds of weight. Each day they can easily expect to cover over 12 to 18 miles in mountainous terrain, as well as having to do some fast paced ruck marches. To top that all off, there's even an event where they must ruck roughly 30 to 40 miles, but the actual distance is is never disclosed. And if that wasn't enough, they go through a series of psychological evals, interviews, and must pass a review board to move on to phase 2 of training. Phase 2 consists of the 29-week recon training course. Here, candidates will learn the skills they will use to operate as JSOC's reconnaissance asset. Candidates will build the foundations of an ROC operator by learning skills such as military freefall, advanced communications, digital photography, computers, photo editing, fieldcraft and stalks, infiltration and exfiltration methods, close air support, advanced driving techniques, demolitions, advanced medical techniques, and tactical man tracking. Due to their rigorous and in-depth training, discrete nature, 
Cyber, and ability to fulfill the essential role of support and intelligence operations, it's safe to say that the Regimental Reconnaissance Company is a lethal foe, yet an invaluable ally. While the totality of their operations is not yet fully known, nor will it likely ever be, you can bet that wherever the 75th Ranger Regiment is, the RFC is not too far behind. With the Regimental Reconnaissance Company covered, let's move on to the Intelligence Support Activity. Arguably the most covert and secretive Tier 1 unit of the bunch, the Intelligence Support Activity is unlike any other Tier 1 unit discussed today. While other soft forces are mostly dedicated to direct combat, the ISA focuses more towards secretive and clandestine actions necessary to support other military operations. In fact, its scope is quite large. Not only does it support JSOC, but it also supports SOCOM and other intelligence agencies. All in all, it's been said the ISA is the US military's own covert army. Officially known as the First Capabilities Integration Group Airborne, the ISA conducts intelligence and espionage operations at a tactical level. To boil things down, you could look at an ISA operative similar to a CIA case officer. But don't get it twisted, most ISA operatives are highly skilled Green Berets, and even though they can function as shooters and operators, most of its personnel are selected because they are uniquely multilingual, as well as for their raw intelligence and ability to be placed deep undercover. Naturally, as an intelligence-centric unit, the most common products of ISA's operations are through the collection of human intelligence and signals intelligence. ISA human intelligence collectors gather information from human sources via coercion and interrogation depending on the asset. Their operatives are masters of screening, tactical questioning, interrogation, and liaison operations, which enable them to collect the best intelligence possible. Additionally, ISA operatives gather signals intelligence primarily by inter accepting enemy communications or sending an agent to physically bug a target. And as you may expect, there are also teams within the ISA who can conduct direct action missions should the need arise. It is believed that the ISA consists of a few squadrons, each with something unique to bring to the table. There's the Operations Squadron, sometimes referred to as the Human Intelligence or Ground Squadron, which functions as the ISA's Human Intelligence Collection Squadron. Then there's the Signals Intelligence Squadron, which you might have guessed is responsible for the ISA say signals intelligence mission. Lastly, there's the mission support squadron. The breakdown of the squadron isn't exactly known, but it likely contains logistical support for the two operational squadrons, such as procuring equipment, getting funding for operations or training, and human resources functions. Although most of the information about the intelligence support activity remains in obscurity, it has become one of the most interesting and influential special operations groups at the disposal of JSOC and the US military. While there are technically only five tier one units with and JSOC, it wouldn't be right not to give an honorable mention to the unit that has been supporting each and every single one of the Tier 1 units, and has been a part of several major special operations missions in US military history. That unit would be the world's premier special operations aviation unit, the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, also referred to as the Night Stalkers. Specializing in transport, attack, and reconnaissance missions, Night Stalkers are highly trained and ready to accomplish the very toughest missions in all environments anywhere in the world, day or night, with world-class precision. If you're wondering why this unit is trusted with transporting the US military's finest warriors, and you'd like to learn more about them, we highly recommend you go watch our video we made on them. The link for it will be in the description below, along with the rest of our social medias which we highly encourage you to go check out. With every tier 1 unit covered, you now know everything that the US government permits you to know about its highly mysterious and elite tier 1 special mission units. What we may never know the full extent of what these units do, we can rest easy knowing that they are on our side and protecting our nation's interests. Well, that is the down and dirty of the US military's 5 tier 1 special mission units. If you learned something from this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. As always, thank you for watching. Do you even want to be here? A special thank you to all of our supporters on our Patreon and YouTube membership. If you'd like to be featured in our videos, consider joining and go check out the links in our description below. Your contribution is greatly appreciated and will help us create more great content. All your friends are subscribing to General Discharge and you don't even want to be here.